Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to ATP Live Monday. Uh, this is another opportunity for you to ask your questions and get your answers straight away uh, from the pediatrician. So welcome, everyone, and um, just... Uh, Feel free to ask your questions and we'll try and answer them as soon as we can. So in the interim, please help us to share the video. Uh, make sure that everyone can see and they can hear. So welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. If you're watching on our Facebook, um, channel uh if you're working on ask Pediatric foundation you can just um, pop in your questions straight away and we will say it if you are watching on other facebook group like atp family and the rest of them you have to click on the video get to the video and then drop your question if you are watching on youtube or uh, instagram you can just drop your question straight away and we will try and answer them so welcome everyone uh, thank you so much for joining us today All right, okay. So welcome to ATP Live. As you're, as you're joining us, feel free to drop your questions straight. And um, you can also share the link to your friends and to your families, to everyone you know should be, benef should be part of this, who may have a question or the other to ask about the health of, your, of their children. Feel free to invite them right now so that they can join us. I'm also just trying to make sure I share the videos to all the right places and everybody can see it and then we can get started. Um, just give me one minute to do all that. I hope you've had a wonderful Monday. Uh, and it's not been so hectic. All right. Uh, I'm also just trying to share it to all our groups now. Thank you to so those of you who are here already. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, I think I'm almost done now. Huh? Okay, Instagram people, I can see your questions. I'm just trying to make sure all our other groups can see it and they can also join us. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think I'm almost done with the sharing. Just make sure they are pinned in the groups. So that's the last part. Some people always say they don't see the, the posts. So that's why we always try to make sure we pin it so that everybody can say it at the right time. Okay. If you can see me and you can hear me, those of you on Facebook, try and uh, just try and uh, drop a comment, something, let us know that you can see us, then we know if we are all on the same page. So welcome everyone, as, as I'm welcoming you, I just want to 
also welcome those who may be watching this later on uh re-watching the episodes remember that all the past videos you can always watch them again on our youtube channel or you can listen to them on Ask Dr. Bemi ATP podcast, and you can also watch them on our Facebook. So, and even on Instagram, uh, IGTV. So there are many ways you can watch. If you are late or you miss an episode, you can always watch it again. And try and follow all of our social media handles so that you don't miss any of our posts. So Monday is the day for also answer question and, and on any topic that you may have with respect to the health of your children. While on Thursday is our teaching episode where we just take a particular topic and then we talk about it. So that is, um, I can't see people commenting yet on Facebook. I hope those on Facebook can see me and can hear me. There are lots of, uh, Challenges with Facebook algorithm these days. So sometimes some posts just don't pop up early enough for people to see. Uh, people may not get the announcement. All right, but I want, if you can see me on Facebook or you can hear me, just let me know you're there. I can see Instagram people are already there. So we can, yeah. Okay, so I think some of you are there already. So just drop your comments, questions, anything. Let us know that you are there. And then we can start to roll. Okay. I think we can start now. All right, okay, thank you so much, everyone. I just want to make sure everybody is can see the video, so that's what I've been doing. So welcome to ATP Live Monday. I am Bimi Salavoide, I'm a pediatrician, and I usually host this program every Monday at 6 p.m. Nigerian time. It's a time of now where you can ask any questions about the health of your children, and we'll try and answer them as much as we can. But if our time runs out and you still have question, remember that you can always post your question on ATP Facebook group from Mondays to Saturdays. And we will answer that we have moderators, we have professionals on our group. One thing you can always take away from us is that any question you ask on ATP, you're going to get an answer from uh, a pediatrician perspective. So it's not uh, like any other Facebook group where you people just give you or many other uh, Instagram platform where people ask questions and everybody's just giving any answer that they like. And thank you to those of you who always tag us on some of those uh, posts on Instagram or Facebook. Thank you for tagging us. But the way we work, we won't we will be able to answer on that kind of a platform because when it comes to the health of children, it is not a democracy of opinion. It is not who is able to shout the loudest or who is able to get the most likes on the comments on, on all that. We're talking about life and death here. So we really, one of the things we 
uh, pride ourselves on as ATPs that when you get an answer from us, you are getting a professional perspective about the health of your children. So uh, instead of that, guys, we encourage those people to come and ask on a platform where they will get a professional answer, and that is all they're going to get. They're not going to get confused by every other person <laughs> putting their answers there. So that is the difference between ATP and the most of the other groups. All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So even if you can't get your question answered on live, you can always post it on our Facebook group and you're still going to get your answers as much as possible. We, we try to say 72 hours, uh, but most time we do your questions, it's 24 hours. But we always tell you that anything that's an emergency, please do not post on Facebook. Some things are straight to hospital, anything that is life-threatening, anything that is affecting the breathing of a child, any collapse, a child is convulsing, a child is in shock, a child is not responding, a child is unconscious, those are not Facebook. Anything that you require an answer, immediately you have to take those to the hospital. But health education issues, what to do kind of issues, um, an elder child, but you want to know how to handle or manage some issues. Those are things that we are very, very happy to answer for you. So as you're joining us, remember again, some group rules. Uh, you must always start with the age of your child. Please don't just say, my baby, my baby. You know, we always like to know what kind of a baby we're dealing with, all right? So we want to know whether it's a newborn baby, a one-day-old baby, a one-week-old baby, a one-month-old, a one-year-old, a 10-year-old, 18-year-old. All of them have still pediatrician's uh, constituencies. So we have a wide range of people and the answers may vary depending on the age of the child. So please always, always start with the age of your child. Try and keep your questions simple and straightforward to the point. Don't leave it hanging. Don't just give us information and not ask questions because we are not going to create the question for you. We always want to know what you want us to do with any information you give to us. So try and ask specific questions you know, when you are, when you provide this information, but I'm trying to just give information relevant to us answering your questions. Um, if you're asking about your baby is not gaining weight, your baby is losing weight, please tell us the weight of the child now, because those are more uh, important to us rather than your own, your baby is looking like a one month old or it's looking like if those are very, on specific and subjective uh, description. So, but if you tell us the weight, then yes, we can, that, that's a fact and we can quickly figure it out. All right. And don't tell us something that's going on for a while. That doesn't help us at all. So if you want to tell us if it's been going on for 10 years, just say it's been going on for 10 years. If it's going on for one month, say so. If it's going on for two hours, just say so. Don't say it's been going on for a while, for some time, those kind of information are not very helpful. So if you're asking about your preterm babies, please always tell us how preterm they were, whether you were, they were born at 26 weeks or 32 weeks or 36 weeks. We need those kind of information so that immediately we have a clear picture and we can give you straight answers. So I hope you'll remember all these basic rules and so that it, it would it will really, uh, limit back and forth asking you to provide more information. So that's why I always like to start with those uh, basic information. All right, so I think we can start. Let's go, let's start with Instagram people. They were the very first to come on online today. And so I'm just, and last week, apologies, Instagram people. I couldn't <laughs> start Instagram on time because I was on the road. But I think towards the end, some of you were still able to join us. So thank you for sticking with us today. Nikki B Collection, please stop. Good evening, my, my breast mix still coming out over a year okay so i want to assume even though you're not very specific enough that you were breastfeeding before and you've weaned your baby and your milk is still flowing and i, I might to assume that it's over a year you stop breastfeeding if that is the instance then that is not normal so you're you should not be seeing breast milk if you are not breastfeeding all right so if you're a woman and your breast is licking milk and you are not breastfeeding that is not good, all right? So 
you, you need to see our gynecologist uh, because sometimes it's because some hormones level are too high. For example, the prolactin level is too high, and that is why sometimes you have what we call galactoria. You are leaking milk when you are not supposed to be uh, producing milk, when you are not lactating, when you are not breastfeeding. So um, the doctors may want to give you some drugs to reduce the level of that prolactin, and you know, and that is very helpful, especially if you are trying to conceive or get pregnant again. Sometimes you can hinder it as well. So if you are, your breast is producing milk and you are not breastfeeding, please see your gynecologist quickly and then they will uh, check your hormone levels and then they will prescribe appropriate uh, medication. All right. Um, Chris, do you why the way say so good evening ma'am my baby is a preterm okay currently on nine one okay chronological age is six months okay correct age is going to be five months okay can i switch to nine two okay i'm wondering why is this baby not on breast milk all right i want the baby to be on breast milk if anything all right but it's up to you really if you want to switch but if your baby is preterm and um it's now your your baby is going to start complementary feeding uh then you can start your nan too but i think you should start at six months corrected age not six months but the best actually is for you to breastfeed your baby that is the best way to breastfeed your babies it's really your preterm babies all right. Somebody say, okay, yeah, Oluwashi, you from be you asked question about, about sepsis, and because of you, I did a whole one hour presentation on sepsis. So if you have not listened to it, then you are you are missing. That is where the answer is. So if you go to our Facebook page, or you go to our YouTube channel, or you go to my podcast, Ask Dr. Me HP Podcast, it's on Spotify, it's on Google Podcasts, it's on Amazon Music. All the podcast platform just check for sepsis i've already done a whole one hour teaching on sepsis for you so go and listen to it like i told you it's not something you're going to do in one and if you check all our pages you will see the adverts about the sepsis uh that is what i did on thursday so one day i do question and answer like this and thursday i actually do a teaching so I take a particular topic and I go to town with it. So because you asked this question about sepsis, I went to town on sepsis last week, on Thursday last week. So if you have not listened to it, just look for it. It's all over the place. You won't see it on Instagram, um, but you will see it on my YouTube channel. You will see it on our Facebook uh, page, Facebook group. You will see it on my podcast. Unfortunately, I can't quickly get to a link right now, but if maybe later on, you can always ask for the link or somebody who has access to that can just post it for you. So uh, go, you should listen to that uh, podcast or watch the video on sepsis. Very, very important. So you get all the answers to your questions. All right. Uh, the next question, Beauty. Uh, hello, man. Thank you. For this opportunity, my son usually okay. This beauty, I guess you've you've asked a question before. I give my grand rules. Always start with the age of your child. All right, you always have to start with the age of the child. I need to know which group I'm turning away so that we know what is the answer. Uh, your son has swelling around its pressure points. What is pressure points? Sometimes it's big and sometimes it's usually funny. Okay, this is, please ask a question again. Number one, start with the age of your child. Number two, state which part of the body. There's nothing called pressure points in the body, okay? Tell us, is it the hand? Is it the leg? Is it the, just use simple terminology of where, where you are referring to. Everybody will know. So that is what uh, we need to know. So then we can answer your question. Okay, say around the elbow and the knee. Okay, good. So how old is this child? Then we can answer that question. Um, Kemi, good job you're doing, man. Thank you. I want to know if your baby can take me less. So if your baby is not yes, when your baby is ready to start complimentary feeding, Chris, please go to our Facebook group 
or our YouTube channel and go and do what we call the guide on complementary feeding or even our websites we have a lot of uh, articles on complementary feeding please read it watch all those videos first you need to do all that before you start complementary feeding you need to understand complementary feeding so it's not a game of can my baby take this can my baby take that there's no food your baby cannot take but you need to understand the principles behind complementary feeding you need to understand how to introduce complementary feeding you need to know what quantity of food you should give to your baby how often you know what texture you know how do you do it so you need to have all that information before you go into complementary don't just start with which food can i give can i say give it's not one food show it is not a one food show it is not a one particular kind of food show it is not a particular form it's not a formula show as well so please go through complementary feeding guide uh watch we have all the global health media videos on complementary feeding i absolutely recommend that you watch them first before you start anything don't even start that's not the first thing to start Get the knowledge first, and when you're starting, when you're doing it, you are well prepared, you are you're doing it the right way, you don't get frustrated, and you're not going to come back and start asking questions about maybe not hitting. So I always recommend you do that uh, first. All right, I'll take one more question on Instagram, then I'll go to our Facebook um, group. All right. So uh, cool, Jenny. Say good evening, Doc. Ma Thanks for this opportunity. You're welcome. I would like to know if it's okay to skinny if I'm back here and the like some babies for specific skin related issue if it is prescribed by a doctor. The answer is if a doctor prescribes a particular product for you for treatment, you can follow your doctor's instruction. Uh, generally, I as a pediatrician, or most of us as pediatricians, we don't recommend three in one products. Okay, the three in one products are often used by people who don't know what they're dealing with. Okay, so most of those three in one products consist of an antibacteria, antifungal, and steroid. Okay, so they mix all the three together and then they say, Okay, you can use it. All right. The truth of the matter is that most of the time, there's no child that needs all three. Most times, the child needs one, maybe max two, all right? So if your child has a fungal infection, there are purely fungal, antifungal cream for such, for such infection. If your child has a bacterial skin infection, there are purely antibacterial cream, all right? If a child has allergy, we have steroid cream for allergic kind of condition. So we should know what we're dealing with and we should ideally uh, just give, sorry, I hope my volume was low before. We should ideally give the treatments for what is, um, what we're dealing with. So most time, um, sometimes we do have situation where a child can have, let's say the child starts with a fungal infection, and then, you know, or a child has an allergic uh, reaction and then it becomes secondarily infected. And those are the time where you really need an antifungal and a steroid together. But most of the time you don't. So I'm not really a fan of all those anti <laughs> triple action cream. I'm not really a fan of them. And I'm sure most doctors... Uh, pediatricians who know what they're doing are not fans of them either. And I'm sure dermatologists are also not fans of them, okay? So, um, but I think it's just easier for people when they're not sure to give you, go and use it at least. Whichever one is there, it will take care of it. And that's why when some of you will use them and you find out that when you stop using them, the rashes come back or they don't go away because you are using one and using a product is not necessary can that's another problem altogether. For example, if your child has a bacterial infection and you use an, a steroid-containing cream, you are going to make it worse, okay? Because steroid is going to make an infection worse. It's not going to make it better. So that is why I'm not really a, a good, um, I'm not really a fan. I prefer, and most of those products are not meant to be used forever. They are meant to be used maybe once, one or two weeks max, and then you stop. But you see a lot of mother just keep using that. Some of them even miss it with no more cream. Please don't do that. All right. Don't don't the skin is an organ. Okay. It's the largest organ of the body. And if you anything you go that goes on the skin gets into the blood as well. I hope you all know that. And if you 
you can damage the skin and it can be very horrible. You can actually have what we call skin failure as well, just like you have renal failure and all that. So please be very careful. Most of these rashes, some rashes don't even need any treatment. So some rashes are due to what you're doing, maybe the products you're using, and all you need to do is to stop them, all right? So please be very careful. Um, well, I won't say don't follow your doctor's instruction, but always ask them what is the diagnosis, what is wrong? Is it, is it a bacterial infection? Is it a fungal infection? Is there an allergic reaction? What is what is the name of this rash? What are you treating? Then that will help you help, help the doctor to also kind of clarify. Then if you, if my child is having a bacterial infection, why do I need a product that contains steroid or that contains a fungal antifungal, for example? So that that helps to clarify that. So that is what I'll just say about that. But anything your doctor prescribed for you by law. You are, you, you are, I can, as another doctor say, you should know you follow your doctor's instruction. I'm just telling you my own uh, perspective on the issue. All right, we'll come back to Instagram. Let's just quickly answer some questions on Facebook. Alade Goroye, Taufika, good evening. My baby of two years, I've been coughing for a month. Okay, if your child is coughing for more than two weeks, it is called chronic cough, all right? So you need to get that child to the hospital. We've treated infection, you've treated cough syrup, da, 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 da. usually cough that lasts one month. It's usually not infection, uh, like the usual kind of chest infection that most of you treat with antibiotics and all that. So when a cough is going for more than one month, we want to do an, a chest x-ray. We want to check, is it an asthma? Is it tuberculosis? Those are the things that can last for one month. Is there something, in the, is it a heart problem? Because cough is not always chest infection. Cough could be a heart problem, especially when it's going on for too long. So don't go using cough syrup, they'll stop. Take this child to a pediatrician, not an health center. A child that is coming for one month is no longer an health center uh, jurisdiction kind of case. That child needs to go to a proper hospital with a pediatrician who will examine the child, listen to the child, do chest x-ray, do whatever they need to do to know why the child is coughing for so long. Active for other symptoms. The child also losing weight. Is child wheezing. There are other things that will tell us what is likely the cause of the cough, and then we can now treat it appropriately. So cough lasting more than two weeks is chronic cough. That cough needs to go to the hospital with a more senior doctor, usually a pediatrician, to figure out what is wrong. And then you say the cough also leads to vomiting, especially after eating. It depends. So there's some kind of cough that sometimes it's just irritation that makes the child vomit. Sometimes there's actually some kind of cough that when a child coughs and then you vomit, we worry about whooping cough. <laughs> we worry about that. But I'm not really sure whether that's the scenario. It depends on how the vomiting happens. But this is not really, this is a child that you want to take to see a specialist. All right. The next person say, my seven months tongue tape is red, though not much. Should I be concerned? I always like to see if you say something is this or that. You say it's red, it's not much. How do you measure what is much? <laughs> All right. So for me, I, what may be much to you may, what may not be much to you may be much to me as a doctor. So it's better I say. So that kind of a question, if you post a picture on our Facebook group, then I can give an opinion on that. All right. Teaching does not cause any tongue to be red. Please stop blaming teaching for every little, little thing. Teaching does not cause any problem. Teaching is just it is coming out. So stop asking that. All right. I don't see any other abrasion or ulcer like development. All right. Um, it is just red. So let's post a picture. Let us see this redness and let's give you an opinion on that. All right. Uh, somebody said two year old front tunnel lobe is still breathing this. Okay, so as for parents, stop using medical jargons. You're going to cause confusion for everybody. Just use the simple language. So if you say, is it the anterior fontanelle that you're trying to refer to? Um, 
It is not called frontal lobe. We are talking about frontal lobe. Frontal lobe is actually the brain inside. No, no, the anterior frontal. And you can't see that, so I know that you are not definitely not referring to the frontal lobe. All right. So I guess you mean the anterior frontal. It is not breathing. It is. It doesn't breathe. So sometimes you hear the pulsation. It is the blood vessels running over the place that is pulsating. If anterior frontal is just a space, there's nothing. So initially it closes by the age of two years in most children. Depends on how big it is. So you don't need to treat anything. Just leave it alone. But your child is also causing your child has other issues. So take this child to the, or the pediatrician. Let them examine the child. I'm not really worried about the anterior fontanel. Um, but if it's not closing, the doctor, depending on how it is, is it like we can see put the whole finger through it or not? Those kind of thing. Let the doctor also examine the child at the same time. But there's no treatment for it. It's nothing, it's nothing you are going to treat. It's not a disease. Is, it is just that it's slow to close. That is all. And sometimes that can give us some idea of some other problem, you know, that may be going on with that child. So, which is what we now need to look for and treat. But we are not going to treat the anterior fontanel itself. It does not need any treatment. It does not need anything. So just leave it alone and don't associate it with any other problem, you know, which is what people always think of oh, the anterior fontanel is breathing. You no, know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Just leave it alone. But see the doctor for that cough that's been going on for one month, and then you can examine the child and also look at the fontanel at the same time and tell you what it is you need to worry about. All right, Juliet, always keep your questions short and straightforward. If your question is too long, Facebook will even cut it off. I can't say the end of your question. All right, um, he said, Good evening. I want to know if a nursing mom on EBF is having fever. What are the treatment? When, when, who, would there be any need to treat the baby too? So you don't have to treat the baby. The baby is not sick. So if mommy is sick and baby is not sick, we don't need to treat the baby. We we'll treat the person who is sick. Okay. Um. Yeah. Baby does not need to be treated. Secondly, my baby pulls when she's being breastfed or immediately after breastfeeding. Is it normal? Yes, that is normal. Does breastfeeding cause rash on baby's face? No. Uh. When the rash, when a little is touched. A particular breast really does not cause rashes on the baby's face. Okay. I want to know whether when do babies stop that egusi type of stool? So baby can always pass the egusi kind of stool as long as you're breastfeeding. So that is the stool of baby on exclusive breastfeeding. And it's not thing to worry about. So Juliet, I guess you're a first time mom because you are trying to hack one thousand one question in one post. <laughs> All right. So don't worry, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, if your baby has rashes, it depends on what kind of rash. So there are some rashes in newborn babies that we don't need to do anything. We have what we call milia, the one that they have like little, little white dots. is something that will clear by itself. You don't need to treat it. You don't need to put anything. Sometimes they have each rashes and sometimes the way everybody is wrapping up newborn babies as if uh, grease must not enter their body. <laughs> so sometimes and the whole house is so stuffy and so humid, no hair, no fan, no noise. That is why those babies have heat rashes. So let the baby be cool, please. Don't let there be ventilation in the house, all right? So you 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 gauge how you dress them according to the weather. If the weather is so hot, don't wrap them too much. If the weather is cold, then you can wear layers of carbs and mintins. But if the weather is hot, they don't need to wear carbs and mintins and socks. It's, it's not really in the constitution that they have to wear that. So those are the things that can cause rash. It's also the products that people use on their skin. So babies are very allergic. They have very sensitive skin. And some of these chemicals, that all those nice, nice smelling products, they're actually chemical smelling. So sometimes they irritate the skin of the baby. So we say use natural products. Use things like your Vaseline, your shea butter, things that don't have too much perfume that are natural. They are good for the skin. Of babies and no powder as well. Don't powder just dry off the baby's skin and make it very uh, dry and itchy and all that. So those are things you should avoid. Then just use natural product. Just keep the skin moisturized. Olive oil, coconut oil, chia butter, vaseline. Those ones are good. So those are the things you should do, and the skin will be fine. All right. Let's just go on to the next question on Facebook. Um. Somebody said, my two-year-old woke up last night with red eyes. What could be the cause? We won't know what is the cause just because of this one line. Okay, but possible things that... Somebody just waking up from sleep can have red eyes. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. It's just natural. So 
usually by the time they have been away for an hour or two, the retina should clear. But if they're not having red eyes persistent throughout the day, they are having high discharge, then we can consider maybe an infection, what we call conjunctivitis, like what people call Apollo and all those kind of things. So that could also be an explanation. And then in that case, you have to go to the hospital. The doctors can prescribe appropriate um, high drop, antibiotics, high drop or something. So also make sure the child has not put anything in their eyes, like they've not, you know, injure their eyes or poke anything in their eyes. So those are the things that the doctor will ask you. So if your child has red eye, first thing waking up, just watch. Let's see whether as they bath, wash their eyes, go through the day, whether the eyes is going to clear. If it doesn't clear or they are not having high discharge or the eyes are coming together, it's very red, then you have to take them to the hospital. That means suggest an infection that has to be properly uh, treated. All right. Um, somebody is saying hi. Notice a red dot on my baby's eyeball yesterday. It wasn't there before. She's eight years old. What could be the cause? Again, it's very difficult to say what is the cause of something when you're just giving us one line. All right. We always need to ask you more questions to know what is the cause. All right. So a red dot on the high in the child world was not which has never been there before, you need to ask, was there any injury to the eyes? That's the first question we need to ask. Did anything poke her eyes? Did she even, even herself putting her finger in her eyes? Those are the kind of questions that we need to ask. So most of the time, you don't need to do anything you watch. And it's more important to know why. If there's no injury, there's nothing, we just watch it. So it may just be a little bit of bleeding in the eye and... And then we'll see. But if there's been an injury or things like that, then you have to take the child to the hospital uh, for the eye doctors to look at it in more details. All right. So um, Cynthia is asking, good evening, ma'am. My baby of four months haven't started rolling over yet. It's not something to worry about. Okay, rolling is five to six months. So always know what is normal first so before you start worrying about what is uh before you start to worry at all so if you go to our face our websites we have a a article an article on it's my child development on call so we wrote there all the normal developmental milestones and when should you start to worry so you may want to go through the article or you can listen to my podcast as well i think i have something on child developmental milestones it's good to know what is normal then you can now know when to start to worry so you don't just worry unnecessarily all right okay let me just go back to instagram people and then we'll come back to facebook um all right um show me for king oh good evening been a while <laughs> so your volume is very low yeah thank you i think i've increased my volume now i hope it's better let me know i did to I did something. I good afternoon. Can I start giving my five month old baby food? No, because it's eager to eat. No, or do I have to wait till it's exactly six months? Yes, okay. So that's a very straightforward one. I don't think I have to explain it to you. There's a reason why we say six months, okay? There are a lot of researches behind it. So we think your baby is ready for solids from six months so there's no extra gain in trying to do it so early do no gain at all you're just going to get yourself unnecessarily frustrated just do things according to the normal way we say you should do it six months six months okay and i always tell people all this analogy of hell oh, maybe you got to it it doesn't mean that you should give your baby food all right when baby is not yet ready because the intestines are not yet ready to digest solids. Your baby most time drag your car with you when you're driving. You don't give them the car key to drive because they are doing that. Because you know they are not yet ready. It's the same analogy. So it is not everything baby is trying to do that you allow them to do. That is where your parenting come in. You do things when it is the right time to do it, whether the baby wants to do it earlier or not. So wait until your baby is six months before you start giving Salad. All right. Um, sorry, where did I stop? Okay. Um, I'm always trying to scroll to his uh, Instagram. It's not always easy. So, uh, something I helped back one day. 
uh what's and down please let me quickly throw my question okay my semen old is half cow pro cow milk protein allergy i've been looking for toddlers so you make really uh, most babies by the time they have cow milk protein allergy by the time they're about 18 months most of them have has grown it so it is not like they will always have it for life so i will say you should try make first try natural milk and see whether your baby is able to tolerate it or not so you can try and if you want to try alternative milk there there are alternative milk. you don't need to buy any special milk for your 18 months old your 18 months old can take the same milk and adult takes there's no special milk from age of one year the babies can take the same milk the rest of the family is taking there's no special special milk they have to take and if you can see breastfeed why not we as I expect you to breastfeed up to the age of three years and beyond anyway. So that may be another alternative. Uh, beauty, see, my baby is two years old. Okay, yeah, beauty, which part of your baby? Say your the legs and your elbows are swelling. If your child is having swelling around the joints, which is what I'm thinking you're saying, uh, then we worry about um, what we call arthritis. Um, and you said sometimes it's coming, it's going. So I really, really think you should see a pediatrician because we really need to know what is going on. It is not normal for babies to be having uh, joint swellings and all that. There are more questions we need to ask about this baby. And I really, for a two-year-old, yes, I think you should see a pediatrician for, for proper evalu evaluation. Adam... Um, uh, my baby of six months loves sucking. Uh, that's good. Only the left part of my breast. No, the baby should be sucking both sides of the breast. Okay. If you play the right, she begins to cry and removes her mouth. I don't know if it's because I have small breast. Your baby sucking has something to do with the size of your breast. Okay. Whether you have big breast or you have the part of the breast that is involved in breastfeeding. Is very small. Most of the parts up there is just fat. That's all. There's nothing. We don't need that for breastfeeding. All right. So if you look at, if you, if you, for those who have my products on First Time Moms Company, I have a picture of the breast where you, a, a cross section picture of the breast. So what actually you need for breastfeeding is those, uh, what we call the make dots. Like there are just about 20 of them. They run through all those fatty layers. That is what they tell me whether your breast is big or not. Whether you have big breasts or whether you have small breasts, you're still going to have 20 milk dots. And then they converge around what we call the areola, that black part of the breast that, you know, beyond the nipple. And the, the milk is still in what we call the milk sinuses. So your baby just needs the, the parts just beyond the nipple. That is where the milk is stored. And so when the baby suck, the, that is where the baby, the milk is being released. So all the other parts, for whether you have 36 or 38 breasts or 34 breasts, is fat. It is not necessary for breastfeeding. What is necessary for breastfeeding is just those milk dots and the areola. And everybody has them, no matter how small your breast is. So it, it has to be the size of your breast. So you must always alternate your breast, okay? You must so if you don't use something, the way the body is structured, use it or lose it. That's what happened. If you don't breastfeed from that right side, milk will not be produced on that right side, and that is why the baby is frustrated. And the only way to get the milk to be produced is for the baby to suck on it, all right? Because that is how nature works. So if you don't use a particular breast, you, there will not be production of milk, and you will also notice that one breast will be bigger. Then the hold that because that is the one that is producing the milk. Why the one that is milk is not being produced because there's no demand on it, then that place will just dry up. So always alternate your breast. Most of you find it easier to breastfeed on one side because that is your comfort side. So if you are if you easily breastfeed on your left side, then you, you, you whether you are whether you sometimes you are not you are not conscious of it, you just always whenever you pick up your baby. You just put the baby on, on that comfort. Then maybe you you, you feel that that part has empty. Oh, then you remember the other side, and then you want to put the baby, and then the baby is like, this place is not 
there's nothing there because they're just knocking all the conscious when you're feeling that that's the last breath from must one you must always alternate there's a reason why you have two breasts and not one because you need it to to breast your baby and also make sure your baby is well attached to the breast not the nipple you know most people always put the nipple in the baby's mouth it is not the nipple it is actually the areola that the baby needs all right that because that is where they make it stop the baby suck on the nipple nothing is coming out baby will cry because nothing is coming out baby will get frustrated so you have to make sure when you want to breast your baby you put almost the whole of the areola that black part beyond your nipple you must barely see it when it is in your baby's mouth. And when you be sucking on that, that is where the milk is going to come from. So as breastfeed on both breasts, alternate the breast, make sure your baby is well attached to the breast. Attachment of the baby to the breast is 98% of the breastfeeding. If you don't get it, you, you can't breastfeed. And unfortunately, that's what most people always miss. So if you want to go to our Facebook group, we have our um guys section we have breastfeeding videos it's also available on youtube it's available everywhere look at those breastfeeding videos look the, at the one about attaching your baby to the breast it is very key that you get the attachment and then it will you know also get the attachment everything will be fine because the more babies suck the more the brain breast milk is produced in the brain not in your breast the more the brain will produce more milk and it will flow down into your baby into your breast for your baby all right, I hope that's helpful. August is always when we normally do our breastfeeding week. And even I've seen our lactation consultant bring, you know, the breast and show you mothers how to do it. Oh, thank you. I love you. See, see my hair is lovely. Thank you. Uh, Beauty says, okay, my son is two years old. He said I'm having swellings. Okay, hey, this is sounding clear. Around the elbow and the knee since he was six months old. <clears throat> Up to now, you know, you need to see a pediatrician. There's something definitely not right okay um we need to see this baby we need to look for conditions that cause recurrent joint swellings okay and uh, some of them are we call them connective tissue disorder some of you know there are other conditions like that we need to check the genotype of your baby so there are many things we need to check so please you need to see the doctors if you are sure the the elbows are swelling you need to see a pediatrician and the color is always dark. The color is always dark. That's a different thing in the But I'm worried more about the swelling. It's not normal for your baby to be having joint swelling. So you should see a pediatrician for properly. No, it's not a matter of what the baby has growing. We don't know what disease the baby is having first. We need to know why the baby is having the swelling around the elbow first. Okay. So the way medical, the way we work in medicine is we need to know what it is first, okay? When we don't know what it is, we can't give you any information about it. And I'm curious as to how come your baby is not two years old and your baby has been having a condition from six months and you, you, I believe by now you should have seen a doctor. That's, I mean, I wonder why you have not done that. The fact that it's not painful and all that does not mean you should not see a doctor. You need to see because it's not normal for your baby to be having swellings at the joints. This is not normal at all. So please see a pediatrician as soon as possible. All right. Um, touchy love. Please, how should a newborn baby be dressed? Okay. <laughs> okay. My parents ask all the things. Sometimes I wonder whether these questions are for the pediatrician or not. Okay, but I guess first time mothers, you know, I got to. All right. So babies to be dressed just like you also are dressed okay so there's no special way of dressing babies um but one thing we need to know the principle behind dressing which is the same principle behind dressing anywhere in the world those of us who live in countries where it is very hot we tend to wear lighter clothes okay um and all that so where are people that live in very you know cold climates kind of country they wear thicker clothes, they tend to wear because they need to keep warm. So which is the principle of dressing? Dressing is to keep us warm, all right? So you dress according to the dictates of the weather in your area. And the same thing applies to newborn babies as well. So um, you, most time newborn babies, 
Number two, they don't have the ability to uh, control their um, uh, what's it called their temperature because they they have what we call a large body surface area to their side. They are very small, and the amount of their skin that is exposed is a lot. So they, their temperature can easily drop and fluctuate so easily because they can easily lose it and they don't have what we call brown fat a lot brown fat is the part is the fat in the body that generates it for us so if you are cold your body generates it babies cannot generate that kind of it they cannot shiver they cannot generate it okay so because of that we need to make sure that we regulate their body temperature for them until they're able to do that and so because of that newborn babies people generally tend to wrap them a lot because they don't want them because of what i just said now uh, they cannot generate it they can lose it easily and all that so but you have to be conscious i think the issue is that most people overdo it especially those of us who live in africa where naturally sometimes our weather is so hot then we over we dress up the baby so much because we don't want them to lose it we actually now make them to sweat so much because they become so hot and then they're having heat rashes so which is what i normally say you know dress will be so usually what most of us do you wear your you know you wear the inner layers and you wear the clothes for them if the weather is hot there's no need to wear cap there's no need to wear socks there's no need to wear minting since it's not necessary okay and there's no need to now wrap them again in shawl and swaddle and everything it is not necessary if the weather is cold of course Yes, then you wear the socks, you wear the mittens, you wear these, you wrap them. So you you are all sensible parents, so you know how to figure out if a baby is sweating so much and that you know this baby is hot now. So you shed the extra layers of the cap and socks and everything. If baby is if you feel their palms or their feet and it is cold, then you know the baby is cold, then that is you wear your socks and all that. So use your own judgments to to figure out how to do that so i think that is just what i need to um to say yeah so you are saying now that your your weather yes yeah, i've already answered that your, if your location is so hot please don't overdress your baby just wear something like their cotton tees and all that for them and that's okay you don't need to wear socks and caps and everything but if the weather is cold <laughs> That's when you do it. Sometimes in the morning, it's a little bit colder than in the afternoon. So you can start with the extra layers of clothes. And in the afternoon, when it's becoming warmer, you remove it. And, you know, you should just use your judgments. As I know you are very sensible for that. So you know what to do. All right. Um, the next question. Show me for King. My new baby. Oh, you have a new baby. Congratulations. So um, my new baby is one week old. I'm producing no breast milk. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know you have a 20 months old, exactly, because I'm like, you always ask questions about your other baby as well. All right, uh, so you are you are still breastfeeding your other baby. Okay, yeah, if you are producing enough breastfeeding for both of them, that's okay. You can, what you are doing is what we call tandem nursing. When you are nursing two babies at the same time, it's allowed. It's okay, you can do it if you want to do it. But ideally, what we want you to do Eh, is that we don't want you to do two babies at the same time, all right? <laughs> Please do family planning for your new baby. Go and do family planning so that you have your baby, your next baby, after you are weaned, you are two years in between. So you should have stopped breastfeeding the other one before you even get pregnant, before you even have the baby. That is the proper spacing, all right? But it's okay to breastfeed itself then. Modupe, my two-year-old was assessed to be on the spectrum. I'm confused. So what is the confusion? Uh, you need to let us know what the confusion is because I can't read your mind. All right. So if your two-year-old has been diagnosed to be on the autism spectrum, which is what I think you're talking about, I would say read more about autism. Uh, if you go on our website, there's an article on autism spectrum. They said, I'm not sure whether there's a podcast on autism. Uh, if not, April, you can always come back. We'll talk about autism in April. That is Autism Awareness Month. Um, then we can talk about it. I believe that usually when, because that's what I do as a developmental pediatrician, when we diagnose your babies, we don't just diagnose and leave you hanging. We normally should have that conversation with you. We try to talk with you, explain what it is. We try to 
um, give you booklets about autism. We try to tell you about the uh, support services available, the therapies and all that. So did you have that kind of conversation with your doctors, with your pediatrician, whoever diagnosed your baby? Because if a professional has done diagnosis, they should have done that. So you should not be confused. So if you have not had that kind of conversation, then you need to have it with a professional, preferably uh, the pediatrician who, um, who did the assessment, I hope. Uh, that is number one. So just let us know whether that is what you need help with and we can help you. I know sometimes you need support group. I think there are a lot of autism support group, even on Facebook. I know about, um, uh, what is it? There are a lot of them on Facebook. Autism, I'm trying to remember the names now, but they all just went off my brain. But if you go on, on Facebook and you type autism parents or autism moms or something like that i'm sure you will see groups the advantage of those groups are these are parents who are working in your shoes so they know what it is to to be discom to be confused and all that and they can guide you and encourage you along the journey some of them their children are now teenagers some of them their children are now adults so they've gone through this whole phase your child is just two so it will be helpful for, I find out that most of my parents find them helpful to be in a support group with all the parents who have walked through that journey before or who are still going through the same journey. So if you need help with that, if you ask us our Facebook group, we can guide you in that. A day is saying, my baby is five months old, can I use Epada cream on him? Why do you want to use that cream? I'm not sure what that cream is, particular. is it a special cream? Is it medicated products or what, what is, why do you want to use that cream on him? So use the normal, I've, I've mentioned the kind of cream we say you should use on your baby, if your baby doesn't have any skin rashes or anything, use those natural products and just keep your baby skin well moisturized. There's no need for any special cream or special products. All right, beauty, you're welcome. Uh, what age is the best to start talking, ma? I don't understand that question. You see, for, are you asking for a child? Like, when should the child start talking? That should be from age of one year. From one year, maybe should have at least one word, one to three words. From two years, combine two words phrases. Three years, three words sentences. Four years, they should be speaking like an adult. Correct grammar, clarity, everything. So I'm not sure whether that's the question you're asking. If that's the question, I've answered. If that's not the question, please ask. A clearer form. Is it true toddlers need sugar like babies from a year? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by sugar. So when you use the word sugar, it, in um, most parents just think when we talk about sugar, we're talking about white sugar, okay? In, in medical jargon, sugar is not just white sugar, okay? All the carbohydrates that your, your children eat, including the milk they drink, is going to be they are all sugars, okay? We have what we call the milk sugar, lactose sugar, that is lactose. You have different kinds of sugars, and they're all broken down to glucose, which is also a form of sugar, which is the last part that is absorbed in the body. So uh sometimes people go and read online and then they start to get panicky about sugar and all that. So it's better to ask your question and tell us your background, what you're thinking, so that. I know what you're referring to, but most of the time what people are referring to is the white sugar that you had to baby's food. There's nothing wrong with adding white sugar if you want to add it to your baby's food, but moderation is the key, all right? Moderation is the key. Some of you are like, I no white sugar at all. Some people are like, oh, there's nothing wrong with white sugar. And that is why people say, oh, your baby actually needs sugar. When people say your baby needs sugar, they're not referring to white sugar. They're referring to that. All the food your baby is going to eat is going to end up as broken down into what we call simple sugars, which is glucose at the end of the day. So I always like to know the background, what you're thinking, so I know the answer to your question so that we don't just confuse you because that question, the way you um, ask it is a little bit, it's not clear to me, let me put it that way, so that I always just want to know what you are thinking first so that I know how to answer your question. Uh, somebody said my two-year-old isn't speaking yet. Okay, Z, I am cake. Were you the one that asked that question about when? what is the age to speak? No, you're not the one, okay. 
um, the three-year-old is not speaking. Babu a lot, but nothing. That is speech delay. A two-year-old should be talking. A two-year-old should have at least 20 to 50 words, all right? Single words, and they should be combining words together. So you need to see a speech therapist. That's the best place to start. See a speech therapist. Then the speech therapist will... Uh, do some assessment. They will give you some exercise to do with the child. You can do some speech therapy as well with the child. If they are worried about other things, they may want to use to see developmental pediatricians as well. Like if they are worried about autism and all that, we have to do that assessment. But sometimes it's just speech delay. There's nothing else. Speech therapists can handle that. And if you go on our Facebook group, we have the guide session. We have some tips of what you as a parent can also do, your do-it-yourself kind of speech therapy for parents, you know, how do you, most parents are worried about the child talking, you want the child to talk, so you start giving them words. Actually, what the repeated, what the speech therapist wants to do is to play with the child, just play with the child, and then you can, you know, because language is actually a symbolic thing, all right? So when I say dog, you don't see D-O-G, you, you think of a dog. You see a, a real dog. So D-O-G, which is the spelling in English for a dog, is actually a symbol that we've all agreed to use to represent a dog. So for children to be able to begin to speak, they need to be able to do what we call imaginative symbolic play. So they, they begin to use a pencil, like a microphone, that is symbolic. So, you know, so, so those are the kind of, uh, what we call preferable skills that they must have before they begin to use the actual words. So there are a lot of tips speech therapists can give. We have a lot, lot of them on our Facebook group. Lots of uh, lot of speech therapy free sessions on YouTube as well. You can go if you want to know where speech therapy. Just Google speech therapy Lagos. <laughs> I'm sure you will see a lot of um, um, all the organizations coming up. You know you can now. Look for the one closest to you and then uh, you can get your information from them. All right, let me go back to Facebook. I'll stay with Instagram people quite a lot. Okay, I think I know where I am now. Somebody say, uh, my one month old have a cups after breastfeeding. What can I do to stop it? Nothing. It will stop by itself anyway. Whether you do anything or not, it will stop by itself. Just leave it alone. You don't need to worry. It's one of those minor, minor things. You don't need to do anything about it. Just leave it alone. Um, you don't have to put any white clothes. <laughs> You don't have to put any white clothes on top of the reason, like my mom would always do. But anyway, if you want to put it, no problem. It doesn't cause any harm. I don't worry about those kind of meats. Those kind of meats are harmless. All right. So as long as they don't put anything in the baby's mouth, but you really you don't need to do anything. It will stop by itself. But mothers always like, I must do something. So some mothers will go and breastfeed the baby, but please don't give water. Don't give water. If you want to breastfeed, it's fine. If you want to put white clothes on your head, that's your, <laughs> your choice. But most time it stops on its own. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, somebody said my baby is two weeks from a year. She's having it is coming. She's been running temperature for a couple of days. The fever doesn't stop. Any of her usual activities though. What how high is this fever? All right, just get a thermometer, measure it. Every mother must have a thermometer. So please get a thermometer and measure the temperature and never assume that your child having fever is because of teeth. Never. That's a very dangerous assumption. Don't ever think a child is having fever means a child is teething. So the fact that a child is teething and the child has fever doesn't mean they are together. They can, they are just, everything can happen on their own. So don't assume uh, the fever is due to teething. So the first thing I even want to know, because a lot of mothers will say, oh, my baby is having fever. Then you go and put a thermometer, the temperature is at 7.3. It's normal. That is not fever. I get that question all the time. So don't even, and I always tell mothers, your hand is not a thermometer. Your hand is not an instrument. That's the reason why we designed that thermometer, okay? Because we cannot trust your hand. We cannot rely on it. We need a, an instrument that will give us objective 
information. So that is why thermometer was designed. So whenever your baby is having, you think, you think your child is hot or they're having fever, grab your thermometer, put it first, and then read it. If it is more than 37.5, yeah, that is fever. Then you can give them a cool bath, you can tap a sponge, you can give paracetamol, and then monitor. Sometimes children are just hot. The weather has been so hot. They've gone through the sun. There's something that the room is hot. There's nothing that. But if they keep on being hot, the fever is going up 38, 39, that is not sitting. That is something that's going on. And the fact that a child is playing, even when they have fever, does not mean they are okay. So most times, that's why I like children. Most times, they don't pretend, you know, if the fever is not making them very sick yet, they won't be like adults and trying to pretend they are dying or something so but that doesn't mean you should take it for you know likely if they're having fever you check the temperature give them press some of your monitor is sometimes children have what we call viral infection they may have a little bit of fever but they're otherwise okay and the thing will stop by itself you don't need to treat it but if the fever is going up and the child is now becoming sick of course you need to go to the hospital uh, somebody said my baby was born pre-10, 29 weeks in May 2022. Okay, so um, we have been taking immunization using chronological age. Based on chronological age, it's 10 months. We were supposed to take a nine months immunization last month, but we traveled to the village. And I'm going, please, you Nigerians, stop using this excuse, okay? Even in your village, there's a net center there. I, 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 I am so sure of that. So please... Immunization is a nationwide affair. There's no reason your child should miss immunization because you travel. Even if you travel outside the country, go with your immunization card. They will give the child immunization. So let's stop using these excuses. I travel and because of that, I didn't go for immunization. There's nothing like that. No, there's nothing like that. Go with your immunization card anywhere you go. When it is time, walk into any health center. Show them your card. They will know what your child has taken before and they will give the next one. It doesn't have to be at your base. There is no base anywhere when it comes to immunization. Even if you travel abroad, they will give the immunization. So please, there's no excuses for that. Go to your village health center. Go and get immunization there. All right? Go and get your baby's immunization. And mothers, let us always plan her head. All right. All this uh, we travel. You already know your baby is going to get immunization, and you know that you are going to travel. So you should have worked that into your travel as well. You should have thought about it. Like I'm going to, my baby is going to get immunization, and I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be away. What is the plan? All right. That is what you should have done. Uh, I don't know how important the travel is, but the issue is even for a Nigerian. If you are, if you are seen in this country, it doesn't matter where you are. Even your village, there is a center there. All right. The idea is that within every 30 minutes, there must be a health facility. And I mean, this is not just immunization issue now. What if your child is very sick and you are in your village? What are you going to do? You must always have a plan of what will happen if there's an emergency. You must locate the nearest hospital to you if there's an emergency. You must have those plans. Our children are so important. We can't just travel and just uh, forget about all the health issues. So please, immunization, no excuse. Go with your immunization card, they will give it in any village. It is the same immunization we all take in Nigeria. They are all coming from the same central vaccine lab. There's no problem, all right? So always go with your immunization card anywhere you go. Even if you travel outside Nigeria, they will give your baby immunization. I, I can I can assure you of that. Because immunization is so key. We can't afford to wait. So we can't afford to waste time. What if there's a measles outbreak in the village? The child is going to have measles because the baby has not taken measles or yellow fever or meningitis vaccine, you know. So don't joke around immunization. Go to anywhere you go, go with your card. And then anywhere you go, find out where the health center is, find out where the hospital is, they will give it to your child. And it is the same vaccine. And you're not going to pay for it, so there's no reason for you to worry at all. Um, if your baby has been taking your immunization with this chronological age, just continue with it. Don't change it in the middle of the road. No, just stick 
to what you've been doing already. Depends. Immunization for preterm babies depend on the weights of the baby. So usually, sometimes we like to start when they are two kg. So if baby is already two kg, we will start. We don't use chronological. We don't use corrected age for immunization. Immunization. Sometimes we even nowadays we're even saying that if baby is well enough, they can take the immunization. You know, some old school pediatrician prefer two kilos. Some people who say even if they are 1.5 and they are well, we'll give them the immunization so we don't wait. Remember that immunization is about protecting that baby. This is not like developments or growth. This is about protecting the baby against infection. So the fact that your baby is pretend doesn't mean your baby is not exposed to tuberculosis or your baby is not exposed to measles. So the fact that the measles is given at nine months doesn't mean your baby that is already your baby is already living on these hearts in Nigeria for nine months already. So your baby is already exposed to those uh, uh, diseases. So immunization is priority. We need to protect the baby against those infections. So we don't wait uh, by age when it comes to immunization. We go the minimum we want is at least two kilos. We start immunization. So, and some of you will say, okay, because you didn't take your BCG early, then you will now say, okay, I will also wait six weeks after BCG. And I've seen some, maybe some health workers who are ignorant tell you people that that is wrong, okay? Even if you, if you didn't take your BCG on time, let's say you even take it five weeks. You will still go and take your six weeks immunization at six weeks, okay? Don't say I have to wait another five, six weeks because BCG will, no. BCG is a separate vaccine. The six week vaccine is a separate vaccine. It is possible for us to give it the same day, all right? The most important, the only vaccines that you cannot take, um, that you have to space are those vaccines that have like uh, three doses. So if you have, for example, the six week vaccine, the 10 weeks vaccines, and the 14 week vaccines, we cannot give you the three of them the same day because they are the same vaccines. So we just have to space them by one month each. But because BCG and Penta or all the other six weeks vaccines, they are not the same vaccine. So the fact that your BCG was given late does not mean you have to wait, uh, you have to delay the six week vaccine. No. So you can even take both of them the same day if you want to. If you are delayed, we do what we call catch up. We we'll give you the same day. So please do not delay immunization unnecessarily. It is very key because vaccine preventable diseases they are killers. So we those are conditions that should not kill any child. Some condition that we have the vaccines for that we can protect the child against. They should not kill any child. So don't delay immunization. Do it promptly. All right, somebody say, my, my baby doesn't suck for too long, five to seven minutes. How old is this baby? Um, four weeks old. So babies, uh, babies, when you start breastfeeding, they are also learning to breastfeed, okay? So newborn babies, they are not as efficient suckers like the bigger babies. So you don't need to be, you don't need to be too worried about it, okay? So... Let them just suck what they can suck. Sometimes they suck more frequently, but more importantly, make sure your baby is well attached to the breast. I hope you've been listening to me when I was talking about the areola and all those things. The number one reason why baby are not sucking long is poor attachment of the baby to the breast. Latching attachment is 98% breastfeeding. New mothers don't automatically know how to breastfeed because people just think you need to suck on the nipple to get breast milk. No, you need to suck on the areola to get breast milk. So sometimes baby is sucking, nothing is coming out. Then the baby gets tired and stops sucking because there's nothing coming out. So please make sure your baby is well attached to the breast. Watch the breastfeeding videos. Make sure the baby's mouth are open wide. Make sure you you shook everything inside before you the baby starts to suck, all right? Sometimes when babies are rushing to suck, they quickly just grab on the nipple and then they start to suck. And then nothing's coming out. Then they are frustrated, they cry, and they stop sucking after a few minutes because nothing is coming out. So make sure that the attachment of the baby to the breast is good. Once that is good, you should, you should feel your breast drain when baby is sucking. As they're sucking, you should feel it draining out. You should feel empty, you know, when the breast is drained out. So 
just make sure you're doing that right. But looking at the weight of your baby, I think your baby is gaining weight if you are exclusively breastfeeding. You didn't tell us whether you're exclusively breastfeeding or not. Um, that is fine. Maybe always strain. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by straining when breastfeeding. I'm not sure I get that part. Um, maybe you need to provide more information. Maybe you should not strain when breastfeeding. Sometimes they, they have what we call suck and swallow sound. You hear that sound as they swallow down the breast milk, but that is not straining. I don't, I hope sometimes parents use words, but that's not what they meant, but that's the way they think they should express it. So we always, that's why I always like to see some things to know what you meant. Remedy for eye discharge, you need to go to the hospital and the doctors can prescribe appropriate treatments depending on what is causing the eye discharge. My baby crosses the leg while breastfeeding. There's nothing baby, run, baby crossing their legs when they're breastfeeding. All right. Uh, is it normal? Is six months old and crawling? I'm not sure. I'm worried about the baby. Um, I worry about a baby who cross their leg all the time. Like when you put them down, when they're lying down, their legs are always crossed. They, they, they do what we call scissoring, like they form like a scissors, you know, and their leg are kind of stiff and all that. Those are the children we worry about. But the position of a baby when breastfeeding is not a problem. Unless baby is always crossing their legs, even when awake, even when doing any other thing else. So that's what I want to keep an eye on. Uh, our time is up. Uh, my eight months old is having rashes close to a month. You treated with antibiotics, it keeps coming back. Who treated the child? I hope it's not self medication. So, I want to believe it's a doctor that treated this child. Then you have to go back to the doctor and then they will treat properly. Don't self medicate with antibiotics. Some of you don't know the right antibiotic one, you don't know the right dose, two, you don't know the right duration, three. You, you may think you are using the same antibiotics, but you are not doing it the right way. And if you don't do it the right way, then you're not going to get the right results. So there are things that doctors uh, know. And when they prescribe medication, there are other factors that we think about. But you just think, oh, every antibiotic is five meals. It's not. It's depends on the weight of the baby, okay? And treatment sometimes, if your child is not responding to a particular antibiotic due to resistant because you've always been using the antibiotics even when the child doesn't need it. We have to give something different. So please take your baby to the hospital. Let a doctor treat the child properly. And even when they give you treatment, even when the pores are disappeared, please complete the antibiotics. If they say five days, don't give it for three days and say, ah, it has cleared. Thank God. No. It has clear, but still give it for five days. It has clear, give it for seven days. You have to complete the treatment or hence the baby is going to develop antibiotic resistance. So please, let's stop abusing antibiotics. Don't use this when the doctor has not prescribed it. Use it for the right duration that the doctor said. If they say give it three times a day, don't give it two times a day. Uh, don't give it any time you like. If they say every eight hours, let it be every eight hours. If they say every 12 hours, let it be every 12 hours. I know people don't take this thing serious. They are very important. Those are the things that predispose babies to antibiotic resistance, and then it will be like the antibiotics is not working. So let's try and follow the doctors to the letter. Final question. What makes a baby weight stagnant? I'm feeding him well. What is your definition of feeding him well? Uh, is your baby on exclusive breastfeeding? Um, yeah, I want to know that. That's the first thing we need to know. Is your baby on exclusive breastfeeding? How often is your baby breastfeeding and all that? So when you go to the hospital next time, uh, you should speak to the doctor who is seeing the child. Your baby is only since six weeks. Your baby is gaining 4.8 and uh, 4.9 so that's not good enough so you should just let the doctors um have a look at your baby but make sure you're exclusively breastfeeding make sure you are breastfeeding on demand you know those are that is the definition of breastfeeding of feeding well first okay yes you're necessarily breastfeeding okay make sure at least your baby is sucking every two to three hours Okay, so sometimes growth is not just about food. If your baby is breastfeeding well and your baby is not gaining weight, then we have to start thinking of 
Are there medical issues? Are there health problems that could be making the baby not to gain weight? So, for example, if children were say, I'm not saying that's what your baby has. So maybe if children have hole in their hearts or they have other health issues, they will not gain weight well. So, but we need to first of all be sure you are breastfeeding well, you are lactating well, and then we can over look at the baby very well to check there's no other explanation for that poor weight gain all right okay thank you so much everybody i hope i've answered everybody's questions um da, da, da. Oh, instagram people okay i think i've answered that one okay just two questions on instagram are there any vaccines for three-year-old child in nigeria no in nigeria no but in other countries yes so um there are other vaccines that the government does not pay for but they are available. So you have things like, so most of our immunization in Nigeria ends at 15 months, uh, but in other places you have what we call booster doses. We have chicken pox vaccine, which is not part of the uh, in, uh, current immunization schedule. We have MMR, which is not part of the current immunization schedule. We have the HPV vaccine. So if you have money, why not go for them? Uh, but if not, let's pray, wait for the Nigerian government to add more vaccines. And then 2605 events, my six-man shoes are gone a lot. Shoes are gone. All right. Hope it won't delay at it from sprouting. I'm still trying to think of how your baby is chewing gum <laughs> because it's very on. It's very. It's not. I'm, maybe I'm not sure. I got what you're trying to explain, but it's not a typical thing for babies to do, you know. So, but it's nothing to worry about. It's not going to affect the baby bringing out their teeth. All right. Okay. Finally, I think I'll finish answering all the questions. So, but if you still have questions, no problem. Please go to Ask the Pediatrician's Facebook group. You can ask, ask your questions there. Our pediatricians, moderators, they are there to help us answer your questions. And you can post your questions from Mondays to Saturdays. A lot of people always send us messages on our inbox, Instagram, every day on Sunday, asking uh, we can post ones. Please always post your question Mondays to Saturdays. And Sundays, we take a break. We won't be able to answer your questions on Sundays. If there's anything the emergency, please go to the hospital. Don't delay. Go to the hospital and get to see the doctors. Our role is just educative, advisory, information. We cannot diagnose your child on Facebook or Instagram, and we cannot treat them but we can guide you on what to do. And that is what we do. So please don't delay seeking appropriate health care. And on Thursday, you can watch out for my teaching session on another important topic. I think this time around, I'm going to talk about deafness. I'm going to talk about hearing because uh, we celebrated the World Hearing Day. Uh, fortunately, in Nigeria, I think we're still missing a lot of our children who may have hearing issues because we are not testing, we're not screening our children enough, but we need to know what we can do as parents to make sure we pick up children who have hearing. And there's a lot of advanced technology these days, so nobody should really have difficulties uh, with their hearing because we have cochlear implants. We have so many technology that people can use to aid hearing, and hearing is very crucial too speaking. So I think that's what I'll be talking about on Thursday. So watch out for it on Facebook, YouTube, my podcast. You may not be able to watch that on Instagram, sorry, because it's not live. <laughs> so, but you can watch it on all the other platform. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me this evening. I'll see you again on Thursday and next week, Monday, by God's grace. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. All right, somebody's asking, is there a vaccine for three hours? I just answer your question. That means you went away. You can watch again, and then you will see the answer to your question. All right, bye, bye.